Welcome to the Agency Site User Guide step-by-step -step tutorial series. During this tutorial, we're going to cover step six of your site user guide, which is managing students and also approving timesheets in Sonia. Let's get started. Once the student has submitted the confirmation of their field placement to the field instructor and it was approved, information about the student will populate into your students tab. If you click on the Students tab, this screen will show a list of students you are currently supervising and include students who have been allocated to the site at which you are a contact, even if you're not the preceptor. Let's see what that looks like. Once you have logged into your Sonia, you want to go to the Students tab. And here you should see a list of students, all students associated with your site and it auto populates basically today's date so if you wanted to see students in a previous semester you can click the calendar there and go to for example maybe you wanted to see the fall cohort of 2018 and then you can go to September 2018 unfortunately we can't do that yet because Sonia just recently launched and our first cohort in Sonia is summer 2019 but moving forward, this will be a great reporting tool for you and your organization. Other things to point out. So I only have one student in here right now, but you can see their first, their last name. If the student provides you with a cell phone number, you'll see that here. You'll see the associated site. So if there's subsites, that becomes a little bit more important. You can see the date range. So that is the semester date range the school in which the student is a part of. Now, it seems silly now to say, well, yeah, School of Community Health Sciences, but technically social work is also piloting this program. So some sites technically do have social workers and our students at the School of Community Health Sciences. So you would see social work students under here as well. And then you would see their area, undergraduate or graduate, degree program, which you might see maybe kinesiology in here. Um, general community health sciences BS is public health and then you'll see their field coordinator which actually is their course instructor as well and then yourself or the associated preceptor so as I said before you'll see all students associated with this site so you'll see technically other students as well and different preceptors at your agency a great feature about the students page as well is that you can email the instructor directly. So I know some of our preceptors get very confused. Uh, Gerald tends to manage our graduate students and I tend to manage our undergraduate students. And sometimes uh, you all are like, okay, who am I emailing here? And so I get a lot of emails that are supposed to go to Gerald and vice versa. But now that takes the guesswork out of it because you can see right here, oh, Gerald's the person I need to talk to about this particular student. All you have to do is tick this box. Press the send email and voila, it brings out your Outlook or whatever your email source is and it'll send an email directly to me and we'll get the conversation started essentially. You can also press this view button if you want to see more information about the student or input more information about the student. So this is where you will manage students essentially. Now let's talk about approving time cards. One of the best features of Sonia is the timesheets feature. We're moving away from the Word documents and the wet signatures. Now students can officially go into Sonia and start submitting time cards or quote unquote timesheets. And preceptors can go into their Sonia and they can approve, reject, or even kick back a timesheet and say, hey, can you put more information into this? Plus, Sonia counts down the required hours the student has to complete based on the approval of the preceptor, of course. So students can see whether they have 90 more hours or 50 more hours or five more hours to complete in their internship. Preceptors will be prompted to approve timesheets at least once a month. This is an auto-generated email. It is personalized, so it looks like it's coming straight from the field office. But just to let you know, you might go into Sonia and you'll see, hey, I don't have any time cards to approve. And that's only because your student hasn't officially submitted a time card. We do prompt students to submit a time card at least once a week, but sometimes they don't do it. It's not a mandatory thing. The only thing that is mandatory is that the final timesheets 
is approved at the end of the semester. That way we know whether or not they completed their full 100 or 200 hours. And you can approve in bulk or one at a time. But bulk is going to be your friend if you have multiple students or you do approve at the end of the semester and you just want to say, looks good to me, tick, approve, good to go. You're going to find this feature under your students tab. Let's see what that looks like. Before I show you how to approve timesheets, let's look at the student perspective. So now I'm logged in as the test student. So this is what their timesheets page looks like. So you can see here this student has actually submitted several timesheets. A couple things that you'll notate, the date, the duration, so that's how many hours they actually did that day, um, and then the activities. So I wanna show you something. If they click this to add a new timesheet. So let's just say the 19th, they did two hours and they have to choose their activity. You can see here in the drop down menu, they only have certain activities to which they can choose from. Data, basic data entry, filing, menial office tasks, independent research, project development, shadowing, and observation. The reason why we want to know that is because our students are only allowed to do 10% of their internship time towards basic data entry, filing, menial office tasks, independent research, and shadowing and observation. Now, we recognize they might do more than that, but they can only claim 10% of their hours towards those tasks. What we really want to see is project development. So let's choose project development, and then they write a short comment saying, you know, um, conducted more focus groups. And then they press save, voila, and now that moves on to the preceptor to approve. A couple more things I want to point out from the student view is that they will see how many hours they're expected to complete. So this student has to do 100. 25.5 hours have been approved by my preceptor already, so it counts it down, telling this student that they have 74.5 hours remaining, and they actually submitted 45 more hours, so 20 hours are awaiting approval, and then it has an activity breakdown right here. Okay, so let's see what it looks like from your view. Okay, so now we've gone back to the preceptor view. So I'm logged in as myself with the Nevada Public Health Training Center. I'm under the students tab, and I want to approve time cards. So I'm going to approve test students time cards. So I just tick that box there, and I press timesheets. And now I can see all the submitted timesheets from this particular student. Okay couple things I want to point out. Number one, you could see who submitted the time card, what site. So if you have subsites, you might see some subsites here. The date in which they completed their hours, how many hours, and what general activity they did, and um, a short comment of what they did that day, which is really important for you to know. So you could see here, this student... Uh, didn't submit a comment, but they spent five hours doing something. So as a preceptor, I probably would kick that back. So I this little U-turn symbol here, I click that, and I kicked it back to them. So they might come to you later and say, why did you kick that back? Um, and then this one right here... Just for example, say, uh, I don't think they did that, so I'm not going to approve that. So you click this little cautionary button here to unapprove. So uh, you want to have these conversations with your students on what you're going to approve and not approve, of course. Uh, they're going to come at you later and ask if it's not approved or if it was kicked back to them for some reason or another. And then um, I'm going to approve this. So this is a single approval if you just want to approve one time card. Or if you want to approve in bulk, all you have to do is click this, and it ticks all the boxes, and you press approve, and voila, all the time cards are approved. So that wraps up 
step number six on managing students and approving time cards. For more information, just go to your site user guide.